Who is this experience for? Well, let's dive into it. Today's video, I'm going to be recapping my most recent experience on board Holland America Line sailing on the Eurodam to Alaska. So if you're curious about the Eurodam itself, if you're curious about Alaska and sailing on Holland America Line to Alaska, buckle up. We're going to get into it and discuss everything that you need to know and what my experience was like so you can learn from my mistakes and take advantage of what it's like when you get on board. My first impressions here, I think the best way to describe this experience with Holland America is relaxed luxury. Have you heard of this before? It started right off with the peer check-in. What a breeze of an experience. Checked in online, had the Holland America transfer. We got on board, I get this, 11 a.m. I don't think I've ever had gotten on that early, but get this, our room, our stateroom was ready as well. Just take a moment. That's incredible. Never had it that early, especially for myself who's coming on board with all my camera gear on my backpack. I'll go ahead and send my bags with the porters, but I actually didn't even have to do that because I had the hotel transfer, which took my luggage for me at about like eight o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock in the morning. They came to my hotel room and and took my suitcases and the next time I saw them was on board. And this worked like a, a breeze. So then we took the transfer over from Seattle to our ship. So already the first impressions were this was fantastic and really easy. So this program is the Port Valet. And since we're mentioning it, I will say that it's also available on the outbound at the end of your cruise. So when you normally leave your bag out at 11 p.m. or midnight, you won't see it again until the next morning. But this Port Valet was available so that it took it to the airport, which in case was SeaTac, and this made it so that I wouldn't see my bag again until Orlando. So all of the airline baggage fees were charged to my onboard account. And this program was actually free of service, which I find incredible. I was expecting to have to pay for this service for them to load it, which just kind of really made it really, really easy for us since I wanted to spend my day in Seattle after the cruise without lugging my bags around since we had a later flight. So just preface that, that was super easy inbound and outbound. But where did this cruise go to on the Eurodam? You may know that Alaska cruises are very port intensive. You visit so many great destinations along Southeast Alaska. So sailing from Seattle, as I mentioned, we had a sea day and then we arrived in Juneau, which is actually the capital of Alaska. From there, we had Glacier Bay, which was actually a split day, a bit of a double header in the term of activities as our evening was actually spent in Icy Strait Point, which was a new port of call for me. I had the first time to explore that. From there, we also had a new port of call the following day, which was Sitka. And then we headed to Ketchikan and then Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. I'll get into all of the ports and the excursions that I did, but first we're gonna dive into the ship itself, Holland America, ship amenities, the facilities, and discuss uh, various experiences on board from you know the pools, the lounges, what I kind of thought of the spaces, and we'll start off with the cabin amenities. So I was actually a guest of Holland America on this cruise, and I had a forward cabin, a balcony on uh, the upper promenade, which is deck four of this ship. So the Eurodam itself is a great ship. It actually was went through a refurbishment a couple months ago prior to me getting on it. So I enjoyed the ship itself. Well, I will say about our cabin though, is that it was one that I wouldn't recommend if you were worried about getting seasick. So you can avoid this by going ahead and booking your cabin and avoiding those cabins where the cruise line picks it for you. I want you to go ahead and look at the ship map or have your travel advisor actually help you do this even better and you can have them recommend you a cabin that's available midship and also lower. Lower decks are great for you so you'll want to look at deck three, deck four, but being midship will really help in case you have any rougher seas as we did. When you're very forward of the ship, we actually were farther forward than the bridge, which I can't think of a time in, uh, you know, this was my 47th cruise. I can't think of a time that I was that far forward, more forward than the bridge. Normally the bridge is like 
all the way forward and sometimes I don't even think there's cabins before that but it was in this scenario and so it was very loud and you could hear all the waves when we had rough seas and also feel that motion so for those who are worried about that that's one thing that I would change in the future if you're worried about being seasick luckily enough though I was okay and of course there's all the remedies that you can take if you're worried about being seasick, I can link some of those in the description box if that's something that's of concern for you. So as I mentioned, I was in a balcony cabin. I did get a comment on a YouTube video uh, a while back concerning Club Orange, and I just want to briefly say Club Orange is not a part of their stateroom amenities. This is a dining perk that you can opt into, so not to be confused with your dining accommodations, but Club Orange can give you dining perks. And if you want perks for your stateroom, you need to book a suite so you can get into those Neptune lounges and things of that sort. We'll get into the dining in a little bit here. Let's get into those onboard activities and talk about the range of activities available during your sea days and your port days. This might include workshops, classes, recreational activities like sports, even cooking demonstrations, wine tastings. And I actually saved all of the daily planners here and they call it the daily. So these are all be posted on my website for those who wanna take a closer look at exactly what was offered on Victoria because spoiler, that's basically like a C day cause you don't get in until night. All the things that you can look forward to doing. And if you find uh, that interesting, it will be on alanazingano.com. I actually found a lot of the activities on board really refreshing. You can see a different variety of activities which are cool i found it refreshing because it's so different from what i'm used to on all my other cruises so if you're inspired by taking perhaps an origami class or a painting there was multiple ones ones with watercolors different ones different opportunities to take in the wildlife on the promenade with wildlife viewing sessions every day because this is a scenic cruise we're going by beautiful destinations and hoping to see some wildlife as well as we come into alaska there also is a really impressive library on board here as well kind of giving you more of that relaxed luxury here if you just want to curl up and enjoy a book there's so many opportunities throughout the ship with the lounges and outdoor space to just relax and you feel that when you're on board so be sure to check out the library another activity that happened on that wraparound promenade was the on deck for a cause which is a non-competitive 5k walk that you can donate and participate in so i think this is a new activity given that on the form that we filled out you get the opportunity to give a little bit of feedback of what you thought of the program even prior to experiencing it and I thought this was cool because a lot of cruisers participated, myself included, and it's for a cause, right? So it went to support Alaska Parks. And I think that is just so cool. When we filled out the form and turned it in, we actually got a t-shirt. This is it, it's green, it says Holland America, and then on deck for a cause here. And they actually wore this, well, many cruisers actually wore this during the walk. So everyone knew kind of who what it was. It had a meeting point, took a big group photo, and it was off. So it was nine laps around the track and a really fun way. I would love to see this roll out onto other type of itineraries and see that go to other type of charities and things of that sort. This activity also gave you a little uh, rubber wristband as well that said on deck for a cause that was wrapped up with this shirt. Now let's dive into some of the entertainment and production shows on board the Euro Dam with Holland America. You may know about the billboard on board. This is the Dueling Piano and our entertainers were Lena and George. They were such a fun duo singing pianists. They had uh, really long sets nearly every single night. So enjoyable to listen to their different shows, request shows, country music, different variety, different decades, a blast. And they had really good engaging uh, just commentary. The other spot where you can catch live music is BB Kings and they had nightly music here. And this is a multi-purpose spot for dance classes. We even saw the comedian here in our excursion meeting point and my fave, the 
orange party at night. Who's ready to turn up and wear their orange? This is the same band that plays uh, every night and you really get a chance to hear them and how talented they are when you keep coming back every night. The other venue that we hung out a lot in was the World Stage, and this is where they had the EXC talks or the excursion talks, and I nearly attended, I think, all of them. Upon, on our arrival to the Great Land, aka Alaska, there was a lot of different educational presentations where these were given by the cruise and travel director, Valerie, along with our wildlife expert, Emran, and even park rangers that came on board later in the cruise during Glacier Bay. They came on during the morning and in the afternoon they were giving a talk. I really enjoyed these. And I don't think it's a coincidence that I had so many interesting conversations with guests throughout the entire cruise. Whether I was just chatting up with someone in the elevator, making friends during a wildlife uh, session on board on the deck on the promenade, just chatting with people in brunch. I had so many interesting conversations. People on this cruise were interested in learning about the destinations, about the cultures we were experiencing. And I'm always really grateful for these educational pieces that Holland put on as well because I love to expose myself prior to getting to a destination so you can feel that much more excited about it. You're interested and you have that background knowledge and you become so much appreciative of what you're looking at. And that really goes beyond the documentaries that I watch at home prior to my trip too. So I just think that that's really special. And that was the vibe on board is that people were excited to be uh, attending these seminars, these classes, these excursion talks and it goes just beyond excursions as well the different talks about the nature and the wildlife especially what type of wildlife we can see you know giving us the knowledge to understand how to use our binoculars because it's not just so cut and dry right like there's actually tips to make it to see the wildlife even better you would think it would be so forward right but it's there's there's not right you don't just look through it and there's ways that you can spot different wildlife and bringing all of us this knowledge to make us have that much more of a chance to see the wildlife. I have been to Alaska before and I've cruised on Holland before but not to Alaska so this was my first experience with Holland in Alaska. Say this, I preface you with this information because I had never seen so much wildlife except for on this cruise. And I think it's because of how many opportunities they had with the wildlife sessions on board, encouraging us to go out and see it. And it was so much fun to do this. I actually saw wildlife outside of those sessions as well. And I was able to spot it and be kind of mindful about it. So I think that's something that I really am taking away from this experience. Now back in the world stage, of course, this area is used for the musical groups along with the dance company so which by the way they're fabulous uh, one of my favorite shows is humanity which I caught one and a half times I came in late to one and then attended it for the next time as well when they played again or performed again because they're just so talented it's a really upbeat show I highly encourage you check out the dance production shows now let's talk about some little hidden gems throughout the ship some other venues that you might find out about is one of my faves is actually the tamarind bar now to get here you need to take the elevator up to deck 11 but not any elevator it's the midship elevator i kind of found this as a hidden gem area of the ship because you have to take a special elevator to get here not everyone might not find it but this bar has the drinks that are available from the tamarind restaurant so if you're looking for perhaps some unique beverages from their menu and the views are spectacular so you can hang out there as much as you like and it's really a cool alternative to the crow's nest for enjoying scenic cruising or just the sunset in the evening to have a drink and hang out i really wish i would have popped up there during glacier bay day to see if folks were hanging out there as well as perhaps an alternative to the crow's nest you get some great views from there and i think folks may have been enjoying that space as well especially just when it is colder and you need some warmth let's talk a little bit about the service and the hospitality so I noticed something was apparently di different and it started with our room attendants and I'm saying 
plural here because we had to. I can't really think of any other trip to where it was necessarily the case where we had two attendants assigned to our room. You've seen two attendants in a hallway before, you know, but two attendants were assigned to our room and this was no fluke. I actually had the opportunity to chat with the hotel manager uh, and we had a brief conversation about this and he said, yes, it's by design. Housekeeping can be somewhat of a mundane task, especially cleaning up after someone who's messy like myself. So being able to find it enjoyable with having a coworker right by your side, make it easier for you to help make those beds and do those things. And of course have the camaraderie of a crew member by your side. I think really helps them. And as cheesy as this kind of may sound, I think the crew really appeared at least to us that they were happy. And really another instance that this sticks out to me is just how they were treated. Let me tell you a story here that I've never seen happen before as well. So this instance is something that really sticks out to me is how they were treated on board. And it's not necessarily something that's always visible to us guests because we don't know how they really are feeling unless you were to specifically ask them. So how cool is it to witness the captain come on board the PA and make an entire ship announcement, allowing all the crew members that they could briefly take a moment to step away from whatever they were doing and they could take a break and pause if they could and enjoy some of the beauty while we were in Glacier Bay because we were able to stop at John Hopkins Glacier. More on that business of a glacier in a minute. But this was the first time all season that they'd made it to view that glacier and it was incredibly special and they wanted to make sure that the crew had the opportunity to take that in as well. What? How crazy is that? Amazing. So bottom line, if the crew is taken care of, you can feel that trickle down effect that the guests are gonna be taken care of. And I think it really made a big difference in my opinion here and how they took care of us. On a specific area where they went above and beyond with the crew is Another quick story for you. I had actually missed the cut up for the disembarkation port valet and they assisted. So this is something that I mentioned briefly where they take your suitcases and they will bring it all the way to the airport so I don't have to lug it. It's that free program for us. And then their baggage fees just from the airline got charged to our onboard account. I love this. I wish it was available in every city, but unfortunately it, well, it's not. Uh, it's in a special agreement that Holland has with SeaTac Air airport, I believe. But with that, I missed the cutoff. That was my fault. I thought I had it taken care of, but I didn't sadly. But I was close enough that they were able to still able to assist me. It wasn't, you know, the day before because this has to be done on like the middle of your cruise. And so I had just missed it and they were able to help me. And that meant the world to me and making those little type of adjustments and helping and going that extra mile. I also felt that extra care. Now we talked about the different excursion talks and before and during the journey to the great land, we felt very prepared. So learning the difference between spotting the animals and the wildlife and the binoculars like we talked about, but of course it seems like such a simple thing, but having all of that knowledge becomes power, right? We're encompassing ourselves to have the best possible experience. So from the educational programming to the dining, which they are offering 100% fully sustainable seafood, which by the way, Holland America is the only cruise line in Alaska that can boast and brag on this. So it's really important. And depending on where you live, sustainability might be a big focus in your neighborhood, but perhaps it's not. Um, so it might be something really cool to see that they really participate in. And if you spend any time in Seattle or you're really in the entire Pacific Northwest prior to your cruise, you can see how environmentally friendly and conscious they are on their decisions. Now for me, I live in Florida, so it can be kind of shocking that we still use and the grocery store still hands out plastic bags at the grocery store for free. You don't even have to pay for them like California and other states. So it's really uncommon for folks to use reusable grocery bags, which is crazy. And it isn't too much of a tangent here because this was actually one of the gifts um, that they gave us was this nice little tote bag here for 150 years that they celebrated. I actually used mine from day one. It really came in handy walking around the ship, even in ports. I'm actually using it right now and 
it's my purse at home. I haven't switched out of it. So I still have lots of stuff in here. But as I gathered, Holland really cares about providing authentic Alaskan experiences. Again, from the dining room to the artwork on the menus. You, these were actually created by a native Tinglet and Athabascan designer. So really thumbs up for striving to support these indigenous designs and these communities. Let's take a little step further into the food though as well, because this is one of my first impressions being back on board Holland is that the food is great. Even in the Lido buffet, I was impressed, right? You don't necessarily expect buffet food to have flavor and spice and just being so flavorful for buffet food cooked for the masses. You don't necessarily expect it, but it was. And because we were sailing to Alaska, of course, there's lots of Alaska specific seafood throughout the ship from the sea day brunch to the main dining room and the specialty restaurants on board. So you can really expand your options beyond what you have at home if you're looking to really try a lot of seafood. Now, what's really interesting and kind of timely and fun is that prior to the start of 2023 Alaska season, Hal made that announcement of being the first cruise line to serve 100% fresh certified sustainable seafood, as I mentioned here only cruise line that does this. And then taking that fresh fish now worldwide, now after the Alaska season, they're making this announcement that they're gonna undergo a whole new program as the cruise line will now offer fresh fish and ingredients native to various different regions. And it's a new program when new menus, this is going to be an entirely uh, fun cuisine for us to explore here. This new program is gonna be coming out in the upcoming months. And they've just made this announcement after I came back from this cruise. So it's really fun to see that I got to experience the one and now we have the new one to look forward to as well. So it's a new initiative bringing global network of over 60 different ports that are gonna source the seafood and serve over 80 different types of fresh fish on board in all the restaurants. So you're going from port to plate in less than 48 hours. And since this cruise news is breaking, essentially, Chef Morimanto will serve this, at, will serve the duty as Holland America's fresh fish ambassador. So he will bring his own signature curried dishes to serve on the ship and we'll see it in the dining room as well as a new pop-up restaurant. So you'll see even more in the pop-up restaurant in um, early 2024. So you can look forward to that fleet-wide. And those dishes are gonna be served in, for the pop-up restaurant, it's gonna be in Tamarind on one night of the cruise or on Pinnacle Grill, depending on uh, what ship you're on. So you can take part in another new uh, globally fresh fish program. So. They've even launched actually the sample menu, which I took a look at, and uh, you actually can look at that as well on my website. I went ahead and posted that at alanazagano.com, so you can go ahead and check that out. It'll be $55 for this experience, and I'm looking forward to trying it. I think it's gonna be a great addition whether you're sailing to Alaska or not getting that opportunity. So again, speaking of specialty restaurants, let's dive into further on board the Eurodam here. Prices for specialty restaurants actually went up recently. So I had the opportunity to dine in a lot of the restaurants and Tamarind being one of them is Pan Asian Cuisine. It's a specialty restaurant for $35. I dined here on the first night of the cruise and that's actually one of my favorite hacks about enjoying your specialty restaurants right away as I feel like you get that extra spoiled uh, feel because uh, not as many people are, are in there. So I feel like you get just a little bit more attention with the venues not being as full. But guests are still getting acquainted with the ship and unpacking or planning your reservations for the other nights of the cruise. So I feel like that's kind of why that's a good night to go if you can make it happen and pop in on there. Now, Tamarind is also half separated with Nami Sushi. So this is part of the restaurant, but separated. If you eat in Tamarind, you can also already order off of the sushi restaurant or you can come back another night and dine in the sushi restaurant so it's sushi a la carte it's about five to seven dollars for a sushi roll with six pieces they also have sashimi another restaurant on board is canaletto this is italian this is 25 dollars, and it's only open for dinner 
They also have Pinnacle Grill, which is steak and seafood available for lunch and dinner, either $19 or $46. And just something to note about the specialty dining is that an automatic gratuity of 18% is added on to all of those specialty uh, restaurant fees. So just something to think about as other cruise lines don't automatically add that on there. So you wanna just make sure you look at it so you're not tipping 45% or something by, by, by accident. Now there's other dining restaurants on board with your quick service, like the Dive In Burgers. This is a poolside grub, burgers and fries included in your cruise fare. Additionally, they had milkshakes that were extra and there was also pizza at the New York Pizza. Ironically, I didn't pump into uh, and enjoy the pizza as much since the location is out on the sea view pool. Given that it's a colder weather sailing for us, I didn't really hang out in this area as much, uh, aside from the sail away party being out on the sea view pool. Also the sea view pool is the section of the smoking area off on the one hand of the side. So if you're dining on that side, you don't smell it. But on the other hand side, if the, for those who are looking for that, uh, but one thing that I did miss with quick service is the Grand Dutch Cafe, which isn't offered on this class of ship. When I sailed on New Staten Dam, I really fell in love with the Grand Dutch Cafe with the Dutch apple pie and just grabbing my specialty coffee there. But they had the Explorers Cafe and also the Pinnacle Cafe as well, which I could get my specialty coffees as well. One thing about Pinnacle Cafe for coffee lovers, the way the bar is set up, you walk by and it's up against a wall. So I didn't actually see right away that it's a coffee bar too. I thought it was just a regular bar to get your alcoholic beverages, but they have the full balloon, a special machines. And I could have gotten my specialty coffees there earlier on in the cruise too, but I didn't, I didn't see it because I didn't walk through it. So just so you know, uh, my mistake, you can learn from that and not to avoid that bar if you're just looking for coffee. Now walking in from the sea view pool as well is the Lido Market. Now the buffet here is served by the crew. It's set up that way by design and they have so many different items and sometimes it's somewhat like tucked in. It's all a lot of items that they'll serve for you. There are some areas where it's pre-plated and you can just grab it. Let me know if you love or hate this that they serve you. I see both sides of the coin here, I really do. You kind of lose some portion control here, but perhaps it helps in food waste and of course less spreading of germs. So I have to say though that the food on the Lido was tasty. I enjoyed breakfast here. I enjoyed lunch and dinner here as well. So I would recommend that you go ahead and look at those menus though, because sometimes you can't necessarily see everything that's back there, especially with the soups and uh, that they have positioned out. So the menus show you everything that's offered in that section. And you can see it even if you don't necessarily know that it's there on the display. Let's talk a little bit about the excursions in our ports of call. So as I mentioned, I was a guest of Holland America, so I had the opportunity to experience a lot of fantastic Holland America excursions. Now, first up, we were in Juneau and we were on the Mendenhall Glacier Explorer. So this excursion was about three, three and a half hours, and it was a new way for me to experience Mendenhall Glacier as we hiked to Nugget Falls. It's about an hour round trip, about a mile um, to do this. There are one, There is one other longer trail that you can do as well if you have more time, but this allowed us to go to Nugget Falls, and we also had the opportunity to go to Photo Point, which allows you to get the glacier and the falls in the same photo. Now, this is something I want you to think about when you're planning your cruise is that if you are looking to do this Mendenhall Glacier and then also like a salmon bake, it's often prepared, uh, offered with as an excursion, you don't get a lot of time at Mendenhall Glacier. So if you're really looking to do the hiking, take your time and take in the scenery and nature and you don't wanna feel rushed and you don't wanna rush nature, uh, then I would just recommend you just doing the Mendenhall Glacier Explorer. There's, like I mentioned, a lot of other seafood on the ship. So salmon is plot in a plethora on board the ship and good salmon too. So I would kind of opt out of the salmon bake and just enjoy the glacier so that you're not rushed. 
um, especially someone like me who I want to take all the the photos, all the videos, and if you enjoy like the photography aspect of it, you won't want to rush those photos and want to just kind of enjoy it. We had the breeze really fast through the visitor center, so I would love seeing more time there. The other thing is that there used to be a bus service that would take uh, any type of cruiser down to the glacier and it was kind of like run by the city that's not running anymore so you do have to take a cruise line excursion or a third party excursion to get down to Mendenhall Glacier and so it runs on times it's not just running on a loop as it was previously so that's why um, managing your time is more important and if you want to make sure you know what you want to see when you get there now Glacier Bay I loved that the park rangers from Glacier Bay actually came on board and take it for them as they say the best side of the ship to view the glaciers is outside. So whether or not you are enjoying your balcony, if you have one, you can take in the views from around the ship. If you aren't in a balcony cabin, there's so many opportunities to view this scenic cruising on the upper decks on this ship, on the bow of the ship as well, they opened that up for us, and the full wraparound promenade as well. Now the crow's nest was one opportunity if you want to take in the warmth, if you're looking for uh, the indoor viewing and also enjoying the iconic split pea soup, which is a special nod to the Dutch heritage, which they, are also passing out the Dutch pea soup on the out the side decks as well. And that was listed in the planner. So if you're looking for that, just look for that on the Glacier Bay day. They, they give out the times if you wanna make sure that you catch that because that is something that they serve on the uh, Grand Dutch Cafe, but it's not available on this ship. So that's your time to look out and enjoy the Dutch pea soup. Now let's dive into a little bit why the special area of the ship here is the crow's nest. So during the Glacier Bay day, this is really a hub. So if you wanna see um, more of the ship as well, you can look out for a full ship tour linked in the playlist here for Eurodam. And you can see all of the other videos that I have from the ship and other venues, but specifically speaking on the venue of the crow's nest, this Glacier Bay morning, it is where you wanna grab your exploration, uh, explorer's coffee and grab yourself a cozy seat and have the morning chat with the park rangers, ask them general Q and A session as well. They have an information desk parked up there. And it also is the location of the pop-up shop where you can get um, your goodies from the Alaska Geographic store that is put on by the National Park Service. And those proceeds go to benefiting the parks, which is pretty cool. Now the Rangers commentary will start as you're in Glacier Bay and you can hear it in public spaces, outdoor spaces out on the ship, uh, outdoors in the crow's nest and also on your stateroom TV when you go to the front of the bow channel on board. Now the only two Glacier Bay activities that don't happen in the crow's nest are the ranger program, which is given in the world stage. So after we leave Glacier Bay, they go on and put on an additional talk. And then also the junior ranger <laughs> program, which happens in the kids club. So just a note, um, there is a really nice quality of merchandise from the pop-up shop. And I can show you, I actually went and enjoyed some of the goodies that they have. Here, a Glacier Bay hat. This is recycled uh, material made out of recycled water bottles. It's nice and soft. You think it would be hard being recycled water bottles. It's double-sided and it has um, a raven and a polar bear. I actually got two of them. So next time I go to Glacier Bay, um, I can be matchy-matchy and have the two different colors. I also got a, a little book here if I were a park ranger. I think I'm gonna save this one for Valencia for maybe Christmas around the corner, right? And uh, I got her some other goodies, so gotta save some things for for that. Aside from the Park Ranger merchandise, which of course was my favorite because you know this is exclusive stuff. You can only get this at the National Geographic store. But the other shops on board, I will just mention as well, had a nice variety. I'm actually wearing um, a Holland America jacket that I picked up and it has the 150 logo and on the back it says Holland America line in um, small font. So I, and do, I did enjoy seeing um, the different type of things that they had in the store as well. Good variety and um, quality as well. 
Now, after Glacier Bay in the evening, we pulled into Icy Strait Point. Now, the main attraction of Icy Strait is most definitely the zip line. If you haven't heard about it, it's a two minute ride down 5,330 feet long, dropping 1,330 feet, soaring 300 feet over the rainforest. Now, you have to take two different gondolas to get you on over to the uh, zip line itself here. The green one is what I've dubbed as the transporter. It takes you from one side of the port to the other. And it's actually bigger than you might expect the whole area. Um, and as I was told by a port employee that the ropes course that we actually kind of zoom over on with the gondola is expanding. And so we're hoping to see that fully open next season and have the, hopefully they'll have enough uh, crew members to put that on by the port. So that would be a paid experience though also. So from our vantage point, when we pulled up, we could see the gondolas and I didn't actually know that there was two gondolas prior to. So the green one is the transporter. And then from what we could see from the ship was the red one going up the mountain here. So once we got over to the other side, that's when we would get on the red one. And there was another ship docked in port. So the red is the very, very steep one. It takes you up Huna Mountain and what a wild experience. I had a friend say who also did this on a previous cruise that she thought that the uh, red uh, gondola was so thrilling that she was almost more scared on the gondola than the zip line itself. So I thought that was kind of funny. But the zip line was an absolute blast. I honestly would do it again. And I have some pro tips for you if you're looking to do the gondola or the uh, zip line, pay attention to when the sun is setting. I would recommend that you do the zip line at like the 7, 7.30 time slot and not the six o'clock time slot like I did. We actually had the six o'clock time slot got up or as we crossed over the two gondolas and we got up there to the safety briefing. We didn't go down until 6.45. So since that took some time, and with that, the sun was actually directly in our eyes as we were going down, we could see, but I think it would make a much more beautiful experience going down just a little bit later. Um, you're getting, you know, the sun setting and which I caught and actually rode the gondolas all the way back because one thing that I learned is that that zip line will take you to uh, the one spot and you actually have to ride the other gondola back over if you put any of your stuff in the uh, lockers, which were free for us to use, which was great. So depending on which ship you're on and where your ship docks uh, with that port, you may need to ride it back over if you do use those lockers. Now, I think this port of call is really great if you're into nature hikes, if you really want to just experience the beauty of Alaska. They even have a guaranteed whale watching tour, which I will definitely be doing when I go back. Guaranteed. That's not other places guarantee it, right? Like, what are they calling the whales? I don't know. But um, it made it a really special visit as I saw a whale at the hull of our ship as we were just walking the pier. So they're definitely present in the area. And my advice for this port is to go in with kind of a general direction of how you want to spend your day and opt into an excursion and an experience. Whether you know that you just want to go take a nature walk, take it easy, go kick stones, throw stones along the shore of the beach there. I've heard that guests were disappointed by this port, but I really didn't think that they had uh, properly set their expectations for one, not knowing what's offered. And I think just knowing what's offered fully will really help your experience. This isn't a port where anyone is pestering you for booking last minute tours as soon as you get off the ship, like you might see in some like Caribbean destinations. So just having a little bit of uh, foresight of having a plan would help you with perhaps your experience. It's very charming. Next up, let's talk about Sitka, which is also a brand new port of call for me. And I did the Zodiac excursion here. So we were learning about wildlife and being on the water that close to nature here really gave us an intimate experience and we were a small group we saw multiple eagles starfish we even saw the spout of a whale we had lunch at finn island which was much more than just a crab feast folks it was an unlimited crab feast and they had a spread for us that was really impressive salad with alaskan blueberry balsamic salmon beef roast dungeness crab 
all you can eat dessert and s'mores my absolute favorite by the fire i wish we had more time here as well just to kind of relax and enjoy just because it was such a cool spot and like I mentioned, we got lucky. The Zodiacs hold 16 people, but we only had eight on our Zodiac. It's not recommended for you to participate in this if you have any back pain, because the faster you go, the more it bounces. But we had such calm waters that it wasn't bad for us. We got lucky with the weather while we were there, and it only got bouncy when we went fast and we kind of requested to go fast as we were nicknamed the fun boat, the fun Zodiac. So you can check out my Instagram reel if you wanna see why as we kind of came up with Simone uh, logos for alternate names and things of that sort. It was a good time. Now after our excursion, uh, we did have the opportunity to take some time and take the six mile ride down into town, which was an adorable experience. I'm so glad we did this. We thought about it and we weren't sure at first if we were gonna do that because we were worried about time, but we did have enough to catch the free shuttle bus there and back, which was offered by the town and just got to experience and pop into some shops and see you know, what it was like. So I'm really glad we did that as well as there's beautiful uh, marina there and just really really nice now our last alaskan port of call is ketchikan and this is where i participated in the salmon fishing so ketchikan if you didn't know is the salmon capital of the world and we had to get up very early for this excursion are you a morning person are you willing to wake up at 6 45 for an excursion we wound up driving about 20 minutes to the marina which i didn't know that we would be driving to get to it i thought we would just get off the ship and you know there's or uh, boats and docks and things that it would just be kind of right there so i wasn't expecting that um to experience that but we got a narrated tour as we kind of drove out of town down to get to the marina now once we got there i learned that the price of our fishing license was not included in the price of our excursion this was an extra 15 dollars uh for a day pass a fishing license and i guess i was confused because i've read on other cruise lines who do this it was priced and bundled in so i I must have read the wrong thing when I was researching on a different ship that it was included and this wasn't. So I did have to use their computers right there and fill out that before we could get on to our boat and they just divvied us up depending on how many people you had. So it's about six to eight people on a boat depending on how large the boat is. Multiple boats went out at once from our ship who were participating in this excursion. It wasn't before long that we actually started getting bites on our uh, fishing rods there and some were too small that we had to throw back uh, catching some king salmon if they're not of length and also depending on the season as well. So we learned about the five different kinds of salmon that are found in Alaska. And then our boat started catching some fish. So um, there was actively three hours we were out there catching uh, fish, fishing, and moving around to different parts of the area. And we had so many different bites of fish between you know ones that we caught and also some that got away as well, which is of course heartbreaking when you're reeling it in and at the last minute um, the fish gets free because it's for me, for someone who ha doesn't have really any fishing experience, that's kind of uh, a bummer. But I will say that this excursion somewhat reminded me similarly to the lessons learned with wildlife spotting, right? Nothing with the nature is really guaranteed except for apparently that 100% are your money back guaranteed excursion in Icy Strait. But we were making up silly songs to call the fish and uh, you know just having a good time figuring out how we can lure the fish in so that we could keep catching more. So if you do do this fishing experience um, and you catch something, you can even participate in shipping at home which is an additional fee and the fees are set by the marina it is pricey by the way so if you want to opt into the alternative which is free you can eat your catch on board in the savor my catch experience on board with holland america this is something that you can uh, have the chef cook up and I'll actually have a whole other video experiencing this, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss when that is posted. 
and you can catch in on how you can have the chef cook it up exactly how you like it. So our time in Ketchikan was actually really short since we did pull in so early. Our all aboard was 12 or 12.30 and we had to make the sprint back um, to go catch a photo at Creek Street because picture or it didn't happen, am I right? And sometimes to quickly zoom in a store and run on back for our all aboard. Now our very last port of call was Victoria, which was another night port. And this is one where by the time we got in, um, it's shortly getting dark afterwards, which of course is a bummer. They do have some excursions like the night gardens at Bouchard Gardens, uh, night view, if that's something that interests you. We opted into just a nighttime stroll to pop into some shops and, you know, go get, you know, perhaps a snack and just enjoy kind of the scenery and getting off the ship. Now there is the shuttle that's put on uh, by the town and that it was 15 Canadian for you to participate in. Holland actually offers an express service, which I believe was 15 US that you could pre-purchase before you get off the ship. And we did see those special buses. It said a different name on them. There was double decker uh, tour buses, coaches that would take you in. The thing of it is, is not knowing prior, something that I would know for you, is that um, if you didn't wanna wait in line on the way back, those might be something that you might wanna actually look into getting those special buses because there was no line and those buses were going almost near empty. Whereas we had to wait in a long line coming back because there was three shifts in port that day in Victoria for just a couple bucks more because I think 15 Canadian turned out to be like 11 US and then 15 US for, so for a couple bucks more, you got the priority bus and not have to wait in line and could come and go uh, really fast into town there. So something just to note if you're looking to explore Victoria. So if you're looking for an overall recommendation of my experience, I hope this was helpful with the different overview of the ports here, but I really enjoyed this cruise on Holland America and the Eurodam is a really great ship. So who is this type of experience really for? I hope the idea of going through the ports and our excursions gave you an idea of what you can expect if you're cruising to Alaska, but there's the Euro Dam itself. I really enjoyed this experience and I enjoyed the different vibe on board from the crew, from the different guests, the mood, you could feel uh, with it being, you know, a mid-sized ship as well, the opportunity to talk to so many other guests, even share tables with guests too, if that's your thing. You know, I really enjoyed that. And I think that with it being a relaxed luxury, air quote, experience here, I think that is perfect for someone who wants to get out there, explore a new destination. I think that's what Holland is great for. With a different type of excursion talks, it really wraps it all in a bow for you, being a chance to explore and dive into it, making you the knowledgeable traveler and feeling prepared for when you get to those destinations. That's what I really loved about it. I can't wait for my next Holland cruise because I want to sail to some, you know, far off destinations. And specifically Holland is also doing some longer cruises, right? More than seven days. You don't really see them do any five day cruises. Seven is really the shortest cruises that they offer. So with those longer itineraries, they're going to farther destinations. So perhaps, you know, we can see me sail to another cold destination like Norway with Holland or somewhere else perhaps and we can really learn about the destination and really immerse ourselves into it and that's what I really loved. So I think this is the type of experience that I would recommend for anyone who wants a relaxed experience. If you're okay with parties not going into super late into the evening, you will still enjoy this with all of the other type of activities. If that's something that you would miss though, is you know the heavy parties, then I would say uh, this is not what you're looking for. But if you're looking for that relaxed luxury, I think you will definitely be happy with this type of experience as I was. So I hope you found this review helpful. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up. Check out the entire playlist right here so you can see even more from the Euro Dam. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, ciao for now.